Hello everybody and welcome. In this video, we'll walk you through how to create pivot tables step by step. No matter if you're a beginner or maybe you've been using them for a while and in the market for a refresher, hopefully we can help you out. If you want to follow along, you can download the practice files through the link below. And let's get started. Okay, before we get into what is a pivot table, let's talk about a broader question, which is why use a pivot table in the first place? The main reason is you're working with a list of data and asking questions that are not easily answered. We'll walk you through a sample list later, but for right now, just roll with it. For example, let's say you want to know what is the average sales per region, or how much of this product did we sell between these two dates, or what product is the top seller? Well, it's safe to say that looking at any list, these questions are not easily answered. So on a broad scale, Pivot tables are intended to make answering complicated questions of a list much easier. And that brings us to our next question of what is a pivot table? Well, please recognize that pivot tables are very hard to describe. The whole idea is you take a list and convert it into something that looks like this. The key is to recognize that when you see a pivot table, you will understand them. For right now, just paint a picture in your mind. And with a pivot table, you want to think display or layout of your data. It's an arrangement of your data. Next, if we take a moment to define the word pivot, pivot in a non-Excel context means to swivel, rotate, move around, etc. So the whole idea of a pivot table is you create an arrangement of your data, then you move the pieces around to create a brand new display. In the end, it's really just a bunch of dragging and dropping. Okay, let's start to make things a little more concrete by getting a feel for our sample data. For this example, you'll be working at a fictitious pet food company, Shaggy Dogs, and they've given you this list to work with. It's a list of orders, and each line item is an order that the company has received. Some of the details they keep track of are the order ID, product category, product subcategory, the geographic region, the country within that region, the customer source, which is how they found us, the order date, any expenses with that order, quantity sold, unit price, sales amount, and profit. And the boss is going to ask questions like, what is the total sales for each region? Or what is the total sales for each region and subcategory? One final key item to mention, please be aware the column labels have a special name when you work with pivot tables. They are technically referred to as fields. You'll see where this comes into play in a few moments. For right now, let's create our pivot table. Okay, now the moment you've been waiting for. Let's build our pivot table. Yet a quick qualifier. Like all things Microsoft, there are several ways of doing the same thing, and creating pivot tables is no exception. There are two primary schools of thought on how to create them. We'll cover one method for now, and we'll show the other method at the end of this video. From there, you can decide what method best suits your needs. Okay, step one, whenever you want to build your pivot table, you want to click somewhere inside the body of your list. Step two, go up and click where it says insert pivot table. When prompted with this dialog box, just click okay because it will give us a blank sheet in which to build our pivot table. Okay, so if you are new to pivot tables, odds are your eyes are being drawn to the left side of the screen. You're better off focusing on the right side of the screen because this is where all the action happens. You'll notice this pane, and this pane has two sections. This top section shows us the column labels or field names from our list. And down here are these four quadrants. These four quadrants are very important because this is where you build your pivot table. If we put our focus on where it says rows and columns, these two quadrants typically contain text fields or fields that have been made up with letters. Some examples from our list include region, subcategory, country, etc. Now, this is not true in every case, meaning a text field always goes into one of these two quadrants. Rather, this is just more of a general guideline. Ultimately, you can do what you wish. Now, if we put our focus down here where it says values, this values quadrant is where you put a field that is typically numeric in nature. Put another way, the field you put here is one that you want to do a calculation on. So let's see this in action. Let's start off slow and build a super simple pivot table. Let's say the boss wants to see the total sales for each country. To build this, we'll drag our country down here into the rows quadrant. Now, if we take a quick peek at our pivot table, Excel has listed out all the unique occurrences of countries from our list. Put another way, 
the country may be repeated over and over in the orders list, yet in the end, here is our distinctive countries. Next, we'll take our sales amount and drag it into our values quadrant. Now, if we look at our pivot table, something cool is happening. Excel is now showing us the total sales for each country. So that begs the question, how did Excel get this answer? Well, here's what Excel did. It went back to our list, looked at all of our countries, then jumped over into the sales amount field, took all the individual sales amounts, and then put the aggregate total for each country right here. Put another way, and going one level deeper, it looked at our list, found all the instances of Scotland, jumped over to the sales amount, took each individual sales amount, and showed us the cumulative total right here. And that's the core of what you need to know. Building pivot tables is really just drag and drop and creating combinations and arrangements of your data. The cool part is Excel will do the heavy lifting. So let's go up here, clear our pivot table so we can start fresh, and now we'll create some different displays. All right, so we just saw a super simple pivot table. Now let's look at a different arrangement of our data. Let's say the boss wants to see our product category, countries, and total sales. So we'll drag our country to the row quadrant, bring our product category to the column quadrant, and last, our sales will go to the values quadrant. And there we go. Let's check this out. Okay, so what's going on here? In this case, Excel has created a fancy cross-reference display of our data. Put another way, at a glance, we can tell we sold roughly 630 of dog accessories in Australia and roughly 1,600 of dog food organic in the USA. Not too shabby. Pretty cool. So why is this called a pivot table? Remember, pivot just means move around, swivel, rotate, etc. So pivot is really a fancy way of saying that you want to move or rearrange things. So let's pivot our data by moving our category to the row quadrant, and then we'll move our country to the column quadrant. Now we're left with this display. So what's going on here? The key is to recognize it's the same data, it's just shown to you in a different way. So if we don't like this display, we can pivot or move our data back to the original location, and now we're left with our original pivot table. And there you go. That's the crux of what you need. All you're doing is just moving pieces around and creating displays of data. Let's move on. Okay, so here's a fun one for you. There are no rules that say you can't put multiple fields in multiple quadrants. So for instance, we can move the product category down here to the rows quadrant. And when you do this, the important thing to focus on is this little green line. This little green line is telling you where the field is going to go when you let go with your mouse. For example, if we drag our product category above our country, when we let go, you'll notice our data is displayed by our category first, then by the country. By contrast, if we reset ourselves by moving the field back, if we do this again, this time placing the category below the country, our data is displayed country first, then by category. Think of it this way. The way these fields are stacked is the display order or the sort order of your fields. So knowing this, from this point forward, you can create any kind of display you want with any type of combination. And before we move on, let's go up here and click on Pivot Table Analyze, Clear, Clear All to reset ourselves, and now we'll move on. Okay, so for this segment, we'll take a look at sorting and filtering within a pivot table. Then we'll talk about this filters quadrant. Let's kick things off by creating a simple display like this. We'll put the country into the rows quadrant, the product to the columns, and our sales amount to the values. Now let's talk about sorting. Sorting can be defined as organizing your data, typically alphabetically, or possibly numerically, say high to low. For instance, the default sort for our countries is A to Z, but if we want, we can sort Z to A. To do this, we can click the drop arrow here, then choose Z to A, and there we go. Another way to sort is by doing a right click. So if we go over here to our sales numbers, right click, then choose sort highest to lowest, there we go. As a bonus, we can click and drag individual items and put them where we want. We just need to be patient and make sure the icon looks like a four-headed arrow before we click and drag. 
We can reset ourselves by doing a quick A to Z sort, and there we go. Changing gears, let's take a look at filtering. Filtering is nothing more than saying, give me all your fill in the blanks. So for example, if we go up here and click the drop arrow and uncheck select all, then say we want to see Japan, Scotland, and New Zealand, we can check the specific boxes, click OK, and there we have it. Now we can see just those countries. Let's reset ourselves to show all of our data, and then we'll move on. Building off the theme of filtering, let's focus on this filters quadrant. The filter quadrant allows you to filter data just on a different scale. Let's see an example. If we take our customer source and drag it into our filters quadrant, when we let go, and if you look in the upper left-hand corner, this drop-down arrow appears. When we click it, it shows us all of our customer sources. Now, if we pick a customer source, let's say YouTube, Excel will show us just the YouTube data in our pivot table. The same holds true if we choose LinkedIn, and again for Bing. You get the idea. We could keep going on with a filter, but realize in the long run, filtering by using the filters quadrant runs into issues. And Microsoft fixed this by creating something called a slicer, which we'll see in the next segment. For right now, let's remove the field from the filters quadrant by doing a click and drag on the field and move it out here into no man's land. You'll notice this little X appears. And when we let go, the field is removed from our display. Now, let's talk about the slicer. Now that you understand how the filters work, let's look at something called a slicer. Think of the slicer as being filter 2.0. A slicer is just a different way to filter your data. And honestly, it's easier and more robust. So let's take a look. To get to the slicer, we can go up here and click Pivot Table Analyze, Insert Slicer. Excel will present us with a list of our fields. So let's check Customer Source, click OK. From here, we can click on each button individually. Let's say YouTube, LinkedIn, or Bing. And for each button we click, Excel will show us just the specific data for each button we click. To reset the slicer, we can go up here and click on this funnel icon, and that will show us all of our data. If we go one step further, we can create combinations by holding down our control key, then click on the choices that we want to see, and Excel will display just the data related to the ones that we selected. So let's go up and reset ourselves by clicking on the funnel icon again. And to wrap up this overview of the slicer, to get rid of the slicer entirely, just select it and press your delete key and it will go away. Closely related to the slicer is the insert timeline. The way it works is if your list has a date field, we can view portions of your data on a chronological level. If we go up here and click pivot table analyze, insert timeline, we can check the order date box, click okay, and right here is our timeline. The way it works is we can click and drag on this slider to view the range of our data. If we click and drag over a blue portion, we'll see the data within a certain date range. Let's say something like this. We can reset our timeline by clicking on the funnel icon. Another thing we can do is if we want to view our data by different timeframes, we can click on this drop arrow and then choose the one we want. Let's say we want to see our data by quarters, and then we can click and drag to look at certain portions of our data. We can reset our timeline by clicking on the funnel icon. And just like the slicer, if we click on the timeline and press the delete key, it will get rid of it entirely. Okay, so let's change gears and talk about calculations on pivot tables. As you can see, we're starting from scratch. And in this example, let's say the boss wants to see the average sales of our categories and countries. We'll start by dragging our countries here, categories to this quadrant, and then we'll put the sales down here in the values quadrant. It's important to note, Excel will always default to the sum calculation. But if we want to change our calculation, what we need to do is hover over this arrow in the values quadrant, click it, and look for value field settings. That's just fancy speak for, I want to change the calculation. If we choose it, Excel will give us a list of common calculations. So we'll choose average. And then to make our numbers look better, let's click number format. From here, we'll choose currency, click OK, and there we go. Now, just to tidy things up a bit, we can change our labels to make it more practical. And there you have it. There's our average sales for our display of data. Let's take this concept of calculations one step further, starting with the display of countries, categories, and sales. 
If we glide down here into the values quadrant and click the drop arrow and choose value field settings, we see the same dialog box we saw a few moments ago. Yet where things get interesting is right here where it says show values as. When we click this tab, we get a whole host of new calculations of which weren't their own video. But for right now, let's keep things simple and go with the one that most people can conceptualize easily, which is the percent of grand total. When you select it, then look at our pivot table, Excel is now showing us our data on a percentage basis given our display. Put another way, we can see that our dog care in the Philippines gave us 7% of our overall sales. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, granted this can get deep, but for right now, let's move on and look at something else. Let's move on and talk about calculated fields. So let's say we have this pivot table that shows our subcategory and sales, and we have to pay 5% taxes on our sales. And quite predictably, the boss wants to see those taxable amounts on our pivot table. To do this, we need to create what's called a calculated field. A calculated field is just a field we conjure out of thin air. It then gets added into our pivot table. To accomplish this, click Pivot Table Analyze, Fields, Items, and Sets, Calculated Field. Next, we'll give our field a name. Let's call it Tax. And the tax calculation is going to be our sales amount times 0.05. Click Add, then OK, and Excel has added our calculated field to the field list as well as adding it into our pivot table. From here, we can change the field name to be something more practical or change the number format if need be. We can even create more calculated fields based off this one. If we need to edit the calculated field, you can go back to the calculated field area, then click the drop arrow, select the field you created, and modify as you wish. Okay, let's move on. After your pivot table is built, one thing you can do is create charts based off the pivot table. To do this, click on your pivot table and then go up and click Insert, Pivot Charts. As a side note, depending on your version of Excel, you might see the pivot chart option from the pivot table analyze menu. So you might have to look for it. Once you find it and click on it, you can see the various types of charts available. In this case, we'll go with the standard column graph. From here, we can modify the chart by clicking on it, then changing the design, colors, etc. We can even add more charts if we wish, but for right now, let's move on. Okay, as we begin to wind things down, you can make a pretty strong case that when you work with the pivot table, everything culminates in a dashboard. A dashboard is just a collection of data, charts, and buttons that allow you to interact with the data. So in the interest of time, we'll put together a simple dashboard and we'll speed things up since you've seen most of it already. So we'll create a real simple pivot table, add a slicer, some timelines, and we'll add in some charts. And let's go with a column graph and the often maligned donut graph because it looks cool. And from here, we'll move things around. And there you go. Sure, it can use some polish and some formatting to make it look nice. But for the most part, right here is a simple dashboard. Let's move on. Let's take a moment and cover a few miscellaneous topics in no particular order. If your source data happens to change, you can refresh it by clicking on Pivot Table Analyze, Refresh All. Let's say you have a field over here in this filters quadrant. One of the cool things you can do is create some reports based off the field that's in here. The way you do it is from the Pivot Table Analyze menu, look for where it says Options, then choose Show Report Filter Pages. When prompted, click OK. When you choose that, Excel will generate a bunch of new sheets that show the data for each item in our filter. To view your source data, you can select Pivot Table Analyze, Change Data Source. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird, but that's how it works. By chance you ever want to see the data that comprises a specific value on your pivot table, you can hover over it and then do a double click. From there, Excel will open up a new sheet and show you all the rows from your source data that went into that particular value. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's move on and talk about another way to create pivot tables. At the start of this video, I mentioned there are two primary ways to create pivot tables. So I wanted to make good on that promise and show you the other method. The other way to create pivot tables involves converting your list into an official Excel table first, then building the pivot table from that table. I know, it sounds kind of weird and redundant, but here's how it works. First, click inside your list and then select Insert Table. Click OK. And now you have an official Excel sanctioned table. 
From here, you can rename your table into something more practical. Let's say orders. From this point to create a pivot table, we can go over here and click on summarize with pivot table. You'll then get this screen. And from this point, creating a pivot table is the exact same thing we've seen throughout this tutorial. Now, some people may ask, why do this in the first place since it seems like an extra step? There are pros and cons to either creation method that you choose. Yet one big benefit to making a table first is that if your source data changes, it will refresh automatically on the pivot table. In the end, as you learn more about pivot tables, you'll figure out which method is best for you. If you have some thoughts on the matter, please let me know in the comments. And that will do it for this one. We hope you've enjoyed it, been able to learn a lot, and we will see you in the next one.